What are your thoughts on um, plans or facilitating planning and risk management? In our industry, we have a tendency to focusing on us. the plan is the end state, it's the, it's the promised land. So if I have a plan that tells me what I'm going to do and what I can do, um, how I can do it, I'm safe. I can respond to anything. Um, yeah, plans are, are funny things. Um, uh, I live in a house in Normandy, France, and it's an old house. And when I first went there, I started doing carpentry. You know, I thought, I, that'll be easy. <laughs> so I went to put some shelves up in the wall. And I designed them perfect geometrical shelves. I built them. I took them up to the wall. It was a disaster because the walls, you know, go like this in all directions. It, was a, it didn't fit anywhere. So you know, my plan met the enemy, and I was totally defeated. And I, I soon learned that you know that's not the way you do things. A, a real experienced carpenter goes up, gets a feel for the wall, and then starts putting up supports in various places, and then cutting pieces, putting them in bit by bit, always with leaving some adjustment places where he can put in a shim here or there to wedge things up. And eventually the, the thing takes shape, but the plan is being formulated as the construction mm -hmm. is, under, is mm -hmm. undergo. And I think, I think this is something that, that has been learned by, by many companies, that, that the world is, is, is complex and it reacts to you, and it's impossible to really to formulate any plan that's going to withstand initial contact with reality. Mm -hmm. It's going to be reformulated and has to adapt. I, I think it was a software company I read about, I can't remember who they are, who, who used to uh, you know, try to develop software by talking to the client, finding out what they wanted, then they'd go off and they'd develop the software. Um, so now they've learned that you know, that didn't work because they, they produced the software, they went back to the client, he said he wanted X, Y, and Z, they thought they produced it, but it turns out in the meantime he, he really wanted A, B, and C, slightly different than X, Y, and Z, or he didn't actually know what he wanted quite. You know, he thought he did, but when he saw the final product it wasn't that. So what they, what they do now is they just do a, a very crude sketch up of the software and have a, have an, a very um, early on meeting with the client again to get feedback. So you know, that really wasn't what I had in mind. I, I wanted it to do something else. So they say, okay, well, we can do that. Um, we can also do these other things that we hadn't thought of before because you hadn't asked that question. Mm -hmm. We can add, that, add those things in. You can and adapt. They, they develop an iterative process of, mm -hmm. of co-adaptation. Mm -hmm. And so they really end up designing the thing together. Mm -hmm. And I think. Uh, I think that's something that you've probably encountered in, mm -hmm. in your work with companies who are responding to crises on the ground, that you know, the, the plan that works is the plan that is, is designed to be adaptable, to learn, to gather information from sources that you can't even identify before you, before you go in. Mm -hmm. um, and it's that adaptability that lets you, you know, kind of co-evolve with those on the ground to, to find the right solution. You make two very good points. You know, one is you got to have contacts. So to do anything, you've got to understand what's happening at right. that point and what that, what's happening to your specific goals and tasks and what's happening in your own operational environment. So it's, uh, it's very challenging to, to codify a set of procedures for something that's unknown or a right. what we call a nonlinear environment. And I think uh, relying on frameworks and relying on tacit knowledge and intelligence or information as it streams in, it is critical. So the second second point, I think, it, which is is great, um, which is you can't follow a linear process. So this is what you mentioned this this right. uh, technology company. So if you try to follow a linear model and try to make everything perfect along the way, um, it, will, it will never work. So it's kind of like this idea: we got to do agile development in anything we do, which is right, right. you know an inch deep, and then we just keep on going in a rapid succession in this co-creation um, process. Yeah, you're stepping, stepping your way into the, the system, mm -hmm. and there, therefore you make contact with the system, you learn something, yep. it gives you a better ability to make the, the next decision. Correct, uh, yeah, I, th I think that, that's, a really, that's a really great point. I mean, I remember the old days when software implementations, you know, you'd be a three-year implementation, and by the time you got down, you know, a year and a half after the requirement session's done, all the requirements are changed, right. so it, yeah. you know, it's, it's a waste of time yeah. uh, to it. Well, in fact, I, I can remember from back when I was a graduate student doing research, uh, you know, all my work was theoretical, just equations on paper, and I'd, I'd go eight, I'd have an idea about how, the, how I might be able to solve this problem, and I'd go eight pages of algebra, and it, it wouldn't work. And people would say, oh, weren't you really depressed? I'd say, no, I, I learned something. I learned why it didn't work. And yeah. at the end, I'd say, ah, but I bet it would work if. And yeah. it was that contact, it was that process yeah. that teaches you something and then you can, you can step forward from, from there. So true, failure is the source of it learning. Is, it really is, yeah. So embrace it and relearn. Yeah.